Hey guys, George here. Today I'm going to bring to you an after action report about scenario J23 CAF group at Karachev. Takes place in um, Kuz, 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 Kuzmenkovo, Russia on the 28th of July 1943. Um, I'm jumping ahead in the game towards the last a couple of turns because that's where all the action took place. So the victory conditions more or less are to provide, provided the Germans do not amass greater than or equal to 38 casualty victory points, the Russian, Russians win immediately by amassing greater than or equal to 25 casualty victory points, or by exiting greater than or equal to 32 exit v, uh, VP off the south edge, which is about here, there. Uh, on between 37 GG or 32 A6, or a game end if they control all the buildings in the German setup area. Now the noise you hear in the background, that is uh, Charlie the Canary. She's a very beautiful bird and I'm babysitting her until October 5th. So bear with me. Um, I think it's really uh, fun to have a canary, uh, yellow bird, you know. So uh, this is Ally Turn 5. And Charlie, thank you, Charlie. So here we have uh, the T-34s basically had to advance through this uh, woods road. Uh, Everything is up close and personal. There's no chance that the Russian player me, uh, will exit the, uh, the required amount of victory points, um, and the German position looks quite solid. Now, having said this, we played the scenario twice, uh, both Dennis and I won solely as the German player. Would we play it again? Yeah, but not anytime soon, but we might revisit the scenario at a future date, and it's a very fun scenario. So let's go forward. Go forward now. You could I changed my image uh, so you can see the dice rolls coming up by. This looks like it's Axis turn five, and that's Charlie imitate trying to imitate the MG42 guys. There we go. All sorts of fun things happening. Trying to repel now the uh, the, um, the Russian forces and not being too successful in this turn. And I have a couple of units here that are broken, quite a few actually. Charlie, it looks like the German player is spoken. There's no MG42 for now. Easy, Charlie. That was Charlie, so a uh, German player is skulking. Advancing, but hey, we, we caught you, buddy. See there? The main army might be milfed, but we have a, a, a six firepower factors that we can use from the MGs. So what is the end result there? A little bit of a morale check. Or maybe not. Makes it. So my strategy here was basically to bring up uh, a, a good amount of infantry through here, a little bit of a frontal assault here, and a distraction from here, with Vasilia coming from the right flank. All right, moving rather along. We're trying to DM that fellow, we did. A few units have moved up. We're firing back at them. No avail. On to the rod phase and advance phase. Let's go back into position. This fellow is out. Got my thinking cap here. Rolled the axis sand somehow. And on to turn six. 
So I'm bringing you here the action, right? Last two turns, we need to take the village, how are we going to do it? That's the crux of the after action report, really. I can bore you with the beginning details, but I think not. The other thing that I'd like to know is, would you like to me to do a picture uh, format, turn by turn, or go through the logs, whatever's best for you, let me know below. Okay. And let's move along. Ally turn six now. Charlie, the MG's 42s have not started shooting yet. It's still a rally face, Charlie. There he goes. Wow, he's loud. All right. Uh, still in rally phase. Nobody has had much success in rally phase. I tried to encircle the guy, going through the rear, get my units bogged. And right now, what it looks like I'm doing is the sleaze freeze to allow my units to advance as much as I can. I'm pretty confident that due to the size of that stack, there's uh, a good amount of firepower there, so I sleaze freeze him as well. And I'm moving everybody up in, against this position. And there's no fire, remarkably enough. I'm moving Vasiliev to reinforce this position. Um, he managed to bring in his uh, reinforces with some with some difficulty. He keeps firing at the four five eight, I suppose, because the four five eights can occupy uh, hexes. And that's that's a valuable target. And uh, Mueller is going to fire his mortar there. That explains why this unit held its fire. And he actually tried to take out the heavy. So ultimately, looks like this dude is pinned for now. The heavy opens up and breaks him and DMs a couple of other units. That leader runs. And I think ultimately, I forgot to shoot this fellow here. And Dennis allowed me to do so. Um, we said, hey, you cannot come closer to there, so this guy's eliminated for failure to route. Boom. Gives me a shiny new machine gun. And I'm moving up, and I'm using the immobilized tank for cover, plus one, Tim. Did not get ambushed, but in any case, this guy would have been eliminated because uh, he's a dummy stack. So we have gain three buildings in one game turn and there's one two three left to to uh eliminate and it looks kind of precarious here because he's locked in co uh, close combat um he's still around uh there's an eight three eight there and we have a two two eight over there okie dokie so we got a 228 there and a uh, wounded leader. Hmm. That's close combat. It was ineffective. They do not roll less than their CCV value. And we're looking at the overall situation and looking for concealment gain. At the end of Ally turn six. Actually, uh, uh, at the end of uh, yeah, Ally turn six, not Axis. So it's the beginning of the Axis phase now. 
We wolf for weather. And now there is deployment taking place. All right. He's claiming law advantage. Nobody rallies. I'm attempting to rally Kirchhoff. And everybody pops up. Or maybe not. Just one unit popped up. Here we go for prep fire. There's a prep fire there. Hidden raid. Ultimately, nothing effective. So that fellow seems to be firing there. Well, a nice shot. And I rolled pretty high on my morale checks. And my sign was a small sign. In that unit, effectively got him out of the fight. There was one unit there that prep fired, the other one did not. So here we are advancing. We have a clear line of sight. Motion status. Defensive fire. And that was kind of a high roll there. From the HMG to there. And we fire group and fire on that unit. Again, too high. I'm not sure why this is marked the uh, first fire because it's my uh, defensive fire. Now, ultimately, we fire, we're firing here. We got exactly what we needed on the to kill chart, and he ultimately abandoned the vehicle. Firing there, we got the axis sand, broke a couple more people. We got pinned. Firing back at the leader, and we turn to advancing fire phase. So here, everybody's broken. And no quarters in effect. Not that I could have rallied and uh, uh, routed anywhere. And they were eliminated. So here's the advance phase. Splits up his 838 into two units. So he covers both buildings. This guy advances into this building at the last minute. And uh, the dilemma that I have, it's a quite dilemma. It's a quite an interesting dilemma is, how do I expel everybody from here now? Right? Uh, and this dude is uh, in, uh, in close combat with uh, my tank. This guy's abandoned. And this guy is in a bog check situation. This guy is pinned, so he wasn't able to advance, so he's, I don't have to worry much about him. So let's go on to um, there's the only close combat involved. The tank is still about, about going concern. And uh, we rolled for weather, six, no weather. And he attempts to pick up the MG, he does. I attempt my first self rally, he's up. 
and there's a soft routing attempt there, no can do. Now we'll go on to unit rallies, and I believe I finally rallied everybody here. Let's take a look. Yeah, they're rallied. Okay, now we're on to prep fire. I should have advanced the wheel. Yeah, you guys can see the uh, screen pretty good. Charlie's taking a little bit of a break. For the morale check and broke him. But keep in mind, whoever prep fires can't move. We've got DM status on these units. But this guy's still a going concern. So luckily, Dennis did do some um, a deployment in the previous turn to cover his bases. Now we're doing a little bit more prep fire. We're actually on to movement. We're talking about movement or prep fire. Okay, there it is. Uh, we only scored a task check here. Yeah. It would be an 8 up 2. We rolled the 7. Yeah. Here we go. We finally woke up and uh, put everything to uh, movement phase. And we're debating how we can do a, a, clo a close combat or an overrun there, but we can't. We gotta, by the time you get out of the hex and try to go back in, um, uh, there wouldn't be enough movement factors. So I decided to just keep him in, keep him in the sleeve sprues under motion. Get a bug check there, and ultimately, somehow, we decided that he was mired, I think. Or maybe not. Yeah, uh, so he was not mired, he was not bogged, but um, the subsequent rule was a 10, so he did not have enough movement factors to go anywhere after that. Yeah. Uh, and basically, if he changed covered arc, he would have to roll another bug check. So, that was that. All right. And now we kind of move up. Yep, we're moving up, and this is where I make my mistake. Um, I suppose it was a mistake. Uh, because uh, I have all these units here. This guy cannot fire. That guy cannot fire. This guy is the only dude that can fire, and so can this guy. So, But I have two DC charges here, and this dude can assault move here, place the DC charge. This dude can assault move and place another DC charge on this guy, effectively putting him out of out of action. Then I could have moved my uh, tank here to sleaze freeze him, and then ent um, entered my squads here, and then entered into close combat. Uh, but instead, what I did is I started charging up the middle like a complete berserk moron. Part of my language. Hindsight has uh, vision 2020. See what I did. Ultimate stupidity. Gave him an opportunity to, to take a, a two down shot right there. Point blank fire. And he rolls a three. Doink. So ultimately, I could have, should have won this game. <laughs> Were it not for my. Um, um, Oversights.
And so I split my forces here, my DC assaults. One went there, one went here, bugged this uh, tank for no reason whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah, instead of, I should have coaxed them into firing, right? Coaxed them into firing. And um, one of the two DC charges would have gone off. And on the other hand, uh, sleaze freezed him and moved my forces right in up the middle. You know what? The next video will be a what if. A what, what if on this particular uh, scenario. That's, that's what I'm going to do. So ultimately, after all is said and done, every other subsequent uh, fire was pretty... ineffective so possibly this is where the log ends possibly I could have won the uh, close combat here by putting in those um, units into close combat there uh, here it, it was a total defeat because he ended up pinning this unit here so he, he could not he could not um, put his DC charge in place. Um, and here the overrun was really ineffective. I didn't bother doing the DC roll because uh, ultimately this dude survived. So I came close to victory with the Russian side, but not close enough. Um, but but having reviewed this, um, the, this uh, log, I'm going to try to recreate the last bit of strategy for the next video, whereby I can uh, I'll try to sleaze freeze him instead. So the last couple couple of uh, pauses, if you may, um, and then try to uh, DC charge him out of that building, as opposed to what I did to see if uh, it would have been uh, a better strategy. Yeah, and I'll uh, do a what if. I'll do a what if uh, video um, in terms of uh, tips and tactics out of this. So a couple of things to learn, right? A couple of things to learn is that um, um, to, to draw a connection to the previous video, as you can see, this terrain is conducive to an attack provided you know how to use it in movement and in cover um, because you, you have this tree line here uh, that you can take advantage and also you have covering terrain for a frontal assault and for a diversionary attack you also have proper cover as the attack but again you really need to use your uh, terrain properly and you also need to have a good combined arm strategy as a German player, um, if you put your ducks in a row, you can repulse any Soviet attack you want. Uh, and, and I think Dennis, in this case, was uh, uh, set up a good defensive posture. He always does. And he came close to achieving a good counterattack. So, a very interesting scenario. And um, as a tips and tactics, I'll bring to you a what if based on the revelation that I had um, by going through this log. So there's the importance of keeping logs and reviewing your strategy. So things that you may not realize during gameplay, because game, gameplay can be very intense, you realize them after in the afterthoughts and you can improve your gameplay for the next game. This is why I had my Grizzlies uh, I think it kept on for this for this uh, movie. Um, yeah, so great scenario. Thank you, Dennis, for the games. I uh, hope to play you again. And maybe we can do a joint uh, after-action report next time around. And um, that's it. Have a great weekend. I'm off to Kirkland for a model train show here in Montreal. Take care. Bye.